Great. We're here in Las Vegas. Connor, I haven't seen you in over a year and a half. UFC 264 was the last time we were able to chat. And it's been a crazy journey for you. What has life been like for you these last couple of years? The only thing, I was recovering from the injury, trying to walk my way back. And now here we are, I'm out here in Las Vegas. I'm immersing myself in the game, coaching these young kids coming up, trying to fight for, for, for their contract, trying to, um, you know, give my wisdom and my knowledge of the game that I've attained over the years. And that's it, it's good to be back. Do you enjoy coaching the Ultimate Fighter? Obviously, we already saw you on season 22, but when you got the call again, what made you say yes? It's just, it's time. It's time for me to immerse myself back in the game, you know. And I was just excited to get back. I couldn't turn down the offer. I was happy with it. I enjoyed myself the last time. For me, when I started teaching, and, and I, I, I used to coach a boxing class in, John, in my coach John's many years ago before I even got into the UFC. And that kind of, that me committing to coaching a class and coaching a couple of people, it almost forced me to dial in a bit more. I had to think about the technique. I had to think about what way I was going to teach, what, what I was going to teach, why I was teaching it. And it just allowed me to actually get better. So... You know, it, it, it works both ways. It's helped me, and like I said, I'm happy to be back. We're doing some good work with the guys. They're responding to it well, and, you know, all's going well. What's the toughest part of coaching the athletes on The Ultimate Fighter? You know, it's you, you become tied to them. You know, you, you want to see the guys do well. It's still, it's. I suppose the toughest part is you've only... You only got a couple of days yeah. and then, you, you know, you're up for the first round, so you don't really get an impact. And if the guy is out of the competition and then maybe you have... You know, I've noticed after a guy maybe has not got an unfair result or not, not got the result we wanted, but then as the days pass after that, the weeks pass, as we get more work done, the guy is really starting to come into his own. So I suppose the hard part is seeing that the potential that these young young, young guys could could have, or do have, and then it's, you know, it's already over almost, I suppose. But I, I, I'm happy, the guys are happy, and I'm sure there'll be more opportunities. For you, you were able to have some people who are close to you come and join the season as well. How important is it to be able to use your success in things and help others yeah. find success as well? Yeah, I, I think I think it's a duty. It's our duty as human beings to give back. We got we must give back. So that that's always been a way I carry, I carry myself. And uh, you know, I have a guy I know I've trained with many years, Lee Hammond, young young, young kid on the, on the climb. And he's been with me in my camp all the way through from the Mendez fights, Aldo, wow. all of them. And, uh, you know, he's doing well. And that's it. We've also, I've also got another guy, Brad Katona. He's part of Paradox Sports Management Stable. He also trains with my coach, John, yeah. in John's gym. So John is close to him. And uh, that, that's, that's really it. But yeah. For you, is there any difference coaching against Michael Chandler than there was against coaching Uriah Faber? Oh. No, I'm having a bit of fun, to be honest with you. I'm having a bit of fun. I, I, I don't mind Michael at all. I might, don't mind the team, the team, the lads. You know, there was a bit of hostility at, at one stage, but for the most part, it's been it's been a lot of good fun. Okay. And happy days. So I do this again. I, I, I really? Would yeah, for sure. I'd coach, this, I'd coach this nonstop, to be honest. Do you enjoy being here in Las Vegas too, also kind of removing yourself from that home base in Ireland? I like Las Vegas. I've got a base out here. I've got got a house out here. The kids are out here with me, uh, and Dee, and you know they're in school and everything out here. So we like Las Vegas a lot. Here you are, yeah, training mm. for a return. Mm. You know, not only just a return, Megan, the greatest return in combat sports. This is going to be, you know, uh, I'm I'm going to kick this guy in the head. He's just tailor made for being kicked all over the place, and that's what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming to wrap this steel bar around around uh, the opponent. And you're going to see a visual of the leg hanging off. And then you're going to see a visual of the head hanging off, you know. So I'm excited for that and I'm motivated for that and steady making my way towards it. What made Michael Chandler the right opponent to face on a comeback? He's put on some exciting fights. He's eager. He's willing to fight. He's a, he's a gamer, you'd, you'd call him. And uh, he's not a bad fighter either. So I'm happy with the opponent. I don't actually care. I accepted this uh, show. It was me and Chandler. So I, 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 again, I don't. It doesn't bother me. I, what do I hope for in this world, Megan? I hope for a hundred more fights. I hope for consistency. I hope for a run. I've had this on, off, on, off for the last while, and it's you know I just I just I just want to get this nice consistency going, and I'm hoping now when I come back, this is where it's at. 
Has being here doing the Ultimate Fighter with your team also helped you maybe get in some sessions for yourself? Because it's very time consuming yeah. to coach. I don't think people realize yeah. how much time and effort really goes into the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, so no, I came, I, came I, I, st- I hit the ground running, you know, obviously I'd just come from Ireland to Las Vegas as a trek, as a first time out into North, into North America for, for, for a minute. So uh, we hit the ground running though, straight away. We, were, we, we, we put on the big gloves, I sparred side by side with the guys. I didn't spar the contestants. You know, I didn't want to spar the contestants. Just you, you know, there's no need for that. I had I brought it brought in a uh, a, good, a good solid wrestler, and he's a, f- a good solid fighter. Also, he's an NCAA champion, Division One. Uh, so I've been sparring with him, and while while in the mix of the class, so I've been getting my work while also monitoring the guys. And then as it progressed, then I watched their work a little bit more intently, and 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 gave them my advice and plan for matchups that they had and it's been quite enjoyable quite enjoyable is the wrestling training partner because of the wrestling of michael chandler In, yeah yeah it's, i mean yeah he's similar style a similar kind of style yeah it's not it's not nothing i'm not not, not accustomed to it's just my, my my training partner you know so you mentioned to me a couple of minutes ago that this is going to be the greatest comeback yeah when you look at your career up to this point mm. what are your thoughts how do you assess it um, just keep going, keep going. We're, we're not done yet, you know. We're not done yet. So, by the time, uh, by the time it's done, I feel I'll have a full circle, and I'll be where I want to be. Is one fifty five an option? Of course, it's an option. I, I've never missed weight. I'm, yeah, no, I know. Forty five pound champion, one fifty five pound champion, and I like one seventy also. I like one seventy, like one fifty five. I like them all. Even like the 145 pound champion Volkanovski, I could, you know, that would be a nice one at some stage. All of them. Do you keep a close eye on the fights when you are away? Of course, 100%. Yeah. What do you think about people now, their huge goals are to be a champ champ, not just a champion anymore, yeah. but it's to be a double champion, yeah. which you essentially yeah. created. Yeah. Well, I'm happy with it because there was a lot of there was a lot of there was a lot of whinging and complaining and oh, I'm not going to move up and fight another guy in the other division because I'm the champion. What's that about? How are, you, how are we going to? How are we going to see how the levels here if, if you're not willing to do that? So I'm happy that that's kind of broke that mold that we were in for a bit where guys wouldn't step out and step up and take sh- risks. Now it's almost a must. You've, you, you, you know, you can be a champion and a champion is cool, but to be a double champion in multiple weight divisions is, 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 is currently the pinnacle. Yeah. You know, until someone breaks through and makes it the triple, the treble. So. Is that something you're going to for sure. On? For sure. There's an Irish flag on that UFC belt, and I'm the reason it's there. So, on the new one. So, for sure, I want to add that to my collection. When you think about returning and what you'll be able to accomplish, would you like to fight more than once a year? Is it uh, something that. Megan, one is not. One is. I need. I want. I, four. Three, four. Is where. Is, you know, if you want to see. If we can get to where I need to get to, three or four a year is perfect. One is madness, and it's been one, one, one on, one year off, one on, one year off, and then obviously with the with the, with the leg thing, it's been a bit longer. So it's just it is what it is. Oh, oh. Amen, amen. In ancient Hebrew, translates to so be it. In other words, amen, so be it. God has it. It's God's plan. So I'm happy where I'm at, and I'm gonna keep doing my thing, keep training, keep getting better, keep focusing on what 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 I can do. And then sooner or later, if, you, if that's what the focus is that, on what you can do, sooner or later you're going to be able to do everything. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm in a great spot. I'm... So during this time away, have you been able to sort of reflect upon some of these great rivalries you have given the sport? I mean, really, when you think about it, we have the Jose Aldo one, Nate Diaz, Justin Poirier. Yeah. And there's been these, when you when you look at these historic matchups, your name comes up a lot. I yeah. mean, have you been able to sit back and sort of look at those fights and all of the things that you've accomplished and, you know, who you've done it with as well? Yeah, fuck those other guys. I don't give a fuck about those other clowns, yeah? By the time it's all said and done, watch what, what's going to say. Well, one of them won me and Diaz. There's a few other ones lingering as well. So we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it to where we need to get it. And I'm excited for it. I just want to circle back on this really quickly. I could be wrong, but... I think you you wrote a message about Jose Aldo being in the Hall of Fame. 
or like a tweet possibly, or something? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on um, on a yeah, former well, opponent. Well earned, well earned. Uh, why did he? Why did he retire? Was he not scheduled to bet fight again? I thought he was making his, making roads towards that one twenty five pound title. I know he was, and then he went great. boxing and all again. I don't know. Whatever the reason is, but I, I, all the respect to him, a real fighter, multiple division, uh, world title winner and contender, and been around so long. All power, all power to him. Wish yeah. him all the best. It's been really cool to sort of watch that whole relationship yeah. evolve. That's the way it should be. That is the way it should be uh, all, all, over time. You know what I mean? You show up to fight and, you know, you got my respect. Yeah. Something else that probably made you happy was a list that I saw that came out that had the highest paid athletes of yeah. all time. Yeah. 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 You're at number 33. The yeah. only mixed martial artist on the list. 33 is an list. angel number as well. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. That has to be very cool to see. I know that, you know, we've spoken before about how the Forbes list was a motivation for a while. And yeah. that that has to be uh, rewarding to see, I would think. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's motivating. You know, Michael Jordan's at the top spot, obviously, with the Jordan brand. Uh, took him there. He's mul worth multiple billions. I think 3.3 is made. I'm closing in on a billion now. I think I'm at about 650 million all in I've made. I think they estimate that. I, I would have to probably do my own little check of that. But uh, I fancy my chances. I fancy my chances of getting up that list. So, yeah, it's good, good to see you. Yeah, and as, as you said, that Forbes was a, a goal of mine to hit that. And uh, I got that and, you know, onwards we go. We spoke about the double champion being sort of the pinnacle now for athletes who mm -hmm. compete in the UFC. Yeah. But things like that are also a big motivation oh, for other fighters. 100%, 100%. You know, we're, we're prize fighters. I fight for the prize. You know, it, it, it's great to be a part of it. And I'm honored and I'm proud. And I love this company dearly. And I think the company loves you back. I certainly know the fans around the world love you and cannot wait to see your return, myself included. Connor, we will be looking forward to that. Thank Thanks. you, Megan. Thank you so much.